Hello and welcome to the WOT Outreach Podcast. Well, by now we should be in our latter episode of the Resistance Sin series, but due to the circumstances that is beyond Barbara's control is uh, kind of sort of put on hold right now simply because her job require her to do some traveling and she is now on a journey for her job and and it's making it kind of difficult to um, do this last series but nevertheless I, I know we can be patient to wait on that because uh it's it's been good so far part one two and three has been good and i'm sure part four is going to be just as good as those three so let's just be a little more patient with her as she uh get done with the, all of this travel and get back on track and, and, and finish up the uh, episode of uh, the Resistance Sin series. Um, I'm so thankful to be here this morning and uh, uh, to uh, expand a little bit on the, on the word and just a little, little short, um, as Barbara can call it, a mini uh, message to uh, just to bless us during the week or bless us during the day or just to bless us in general. We are, just going to be short and sweet with this, and we're going to be right out of your way, and then we are going to enjoy our day. So we're going to try to talk a little bit about the um, the arrow status. The arrow status. Uh, the arrow status is when we are in our walk or in our lifestyle or however we want to see it, we um, are doing things not exactly the way it should be done, we are not exactly where we should be. We're not uh, speaking the things we should speak. And uh, with God, that is important that we be on track with him. We be on target to do the things that he has called us out to do simply because there are so many that have uh, failed to call on the Lord for salvation. And, and it is our job because um, I remember in the word where when Jesus was you know, going on the cross and he cried out to the father. He was saying, father, I have given thee back as many as thou has given me. Jesus was saying, you know, I'll give up. I gave opportunity for everyone that, that could, should notice me and, um, receive me and believe on me could be saved and have everlasting life. So he said, I've given them, given you back as many as thou has given me. So um, it is our job to continue on the task to make sure that everyone comes to the knowledge of the truth of the word and come to the knowledge of Jesus is Lord and Savior of their lives and how they should repent and be baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. And um, two, to bring out the fact that still today, uh, 2022, that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So it is our job to continue this task on. But nevertheless, um, we want to talk a little bit about the uh, the error status in our lives. Amen. No matter how old or how young, if we're black, if we're white, if we're brown, if we're yellow, if we're a boy, if we're a girl, a woman, or a man, tall or short, God has need of us. He has called all of us to salvation and to a work. To a work. Some of us, after all of this time of being saved, have missed the memo that God has called us out to a work. Some of us, as I remember back in the day in the church, uh, this one particular uh, mother, I think uh, Mother James, she used to say, you're sitting on your seat or do nothing. And that seems to be the trend going on. We are just plain satisfied in where we are in our status. And and most of the status is because uh, how we have come up and reared in church and we have seen how things has been operated and nobody seemed to uh, do like it's needed. Uh, like even in the school system, how some kids are not really pushed to do better in class so that they can grow up and be uh, productive citizens and have the proper jobs, make the proper money, 
to be able to take care of themselves. No one uh, seems to be pushing as hard as it is needed to be pushed. And it's the same thing within the church. You know, we go in, we go through our normal rituals, we uh what we what we call praise and worship and we sing and then we hear the word and then we go back home but nobody seems to talk about what went on during church after church so no one is um, really ain't pushing as hard as it need to be pushed in order to get everybody up to speed amen so we have placed ourselves on a spiritual hold this means that we have nothing going on, we are doing nothing, and not looking to do anything. So we own a what I call a spiritual hole. You know, we are fine just where we stand. Somehow there has to be um, a way to come out from what has been naturally normal, and that's doing nothing. Someone has to get on fire. Someone got to see the importance of, of someone being saved. Someone got to see the importance of someone being delivered. Someone got to see the importance of someone being set free. And it is every one of our jobs and responsibility to make sure that our fellow man, our brothers and our sisters that are unsaved and unconcerned come to the marvelous light. Amen. Somehow there has been an error in our spiritual programming. How did this happen? Uh, again, I, I say it has a lot to do with our ancestors as we come up as a kid watching how they operated within the church realm and how they uh, did things and, and how they didn't do things. Amen. But the Bible teaches us about the spirit of error. This spirit comes in our lives at a young age. Just like some generational curses, this spirit is handed down by our ancestors. Lots of things our family do is out of error and tell themselves it's fine. God understands we ain't perfect. The same error is handed down to the generation of children. We go through life knowingly messing up. Then tell ourselves the same thing our ancestors said. Nobody's perfect. God understands what we are going through. But Matthew 5 and 48 said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So no matter how hard it has been and how hard it is, reverse the curse and strive for godly perfection. Let's talk about who it is that we trust with our spiritual growth. We have been taught that Whosoever is head of the family generation of church is the one who is responsible for our knowing God and his salvation. What if this person have no vision? What if this person isn't anointed? What if this person don't have your growth ahead of their list of things to do? What if they see it as it's all about them and their gain? Mm. We learn in these churches that we are okay if no one knows our potential. That's sitting in that seat of do nothing. Might have a gift. Might have something inside of you that can change the church as you know it. But nevertheless, we sit back and we do nothing. So it's okay with us if the pastor don't know what our potential is. It's okay. So, if our pastor don't know what life we live outside of the church, we how can we worry more about what folk of the church n- don't know than we do about what God knows? The Bible teaches us that the eyes of the Lord is in every place, not some places, but in every place, beholding the good and the bad or the evil. One of our problems is we forget who it is that calls us. The Bible teaches us not to be a pleaser, a man. And it also tells us we can't serve to masters. Matthew 6 and 24 states, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he would hold to the one and despise the other. 
You cannot serve God and mammon. So most of the time, it's God that we despise. We love you, Lord, but it's pastor that has my attention. So in this, we find ourselves doing more by man direction than we, than we are with God leading. Now, if the church is directing you according to the Lord's leadership and the directions, then it's all good. But most will tell you, teach you, show you mostly what it is they, they want you to know. What if your pastor can't tell you what it is you need to be doing? What will you do next? Hmm. Let me answer that. Most of you are satisfied. Just going to church. You see, it is like this. If somebody is doing something other than you, then that's okay with you. That makes you satisfied just being in the number. The Lord would never call any of us to sit or to be idle. Every one of us has been called to serve. Get that this morning. Amen. Everything we do is for the glory of God and for God. God does not call any of us just to be just to satisfy man in general. We are to serve, yes, but only God can okay your call or your gift because he alone gave it to you. Come on here, somebody. What, whatever he sees in us pleases him enough to call us and to anoint us just for his work. The Bible teaches us that he is a jealous God and don't like any man getting his glory. Doing what he doing what he ordains, come on here. For you is for him. Get it. So the curse of error has to be reversed. The whole truth not the truth, but the whole truth can only come from the Lord. John eight thirty two states, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So get out of error. It is the spirit of error that will make a Christian indulge in fornication. It is the spirit of, of error that will allow a Christian to be in adultery. And it will still, and, and, and basically, it will make you believe that you are still on the right path to heaven. And there's something wrong with that picture. How can you sin? How can you do wrong? How can you just be wrong in general and thinking you still on your way to heaven? There's something wrong with that picture. Amen. But I want you to understand that the spirit of error is in the land and there got to be something done about this spirit of error, it has to be reversed simply because if you don't change, then those that are depending on you to witness to them, those that are depending on you to teach them will always be in error as well as you are. So it's time to change. It's time to reverse the curse of error so that the world can live. The world can be better because if you have looked at everything around you lately, as I say, say often, this world is in trouble. This world is in such a place that only God can change it. And Bible tells me that when the world has gotten into the place where it displeased God and it's just sin all around, you had everything going on, murders, you name it, everything going on, God decided to end things. And we know that Jesus is coming back. When, we don't know, but yet and still, we got to be also ready. And not just us, but those that are around us. So it is, it's very important that we reverse that, that, that curse that has given us the spirit of error and allow us to uh, just sit around, unprogrammed to work and to serve and to bring somebody out of bondage. We got to reverse this. Amen. So. I want to just cover a few scriptures and to give you an indication on um, how the curse need to be versed and why the curse need to be versed because we are satisfying other people's greater than we are satisfying God. It's not about people's kind of sort of reminded me 
on one lesson that we we spoke here about Saul and how um, Saul began to you know fail to do what was told of him to do and and he decided to listen to the voice of the people because he said he feared them so he just decided to let them get by with some things that the Lord did not want them to get by with so we can't get to that point that we fear people to the point that we can't uh, preach them about hell that we can't preach to them about being delivered. We can't preach to them about being saved. We can't fear people enough to uh, be away from those things that God has called us out to do. And I'll state again, God called us out to serve. Yes, we serve our pastors. Yes, we serve our church. But at the end of the day, it's all about God. It's all about him. It's all about us glorifying him, not glorifying pastor all the time. Or making pastor make it seem like pastor is where you get your flow. Pastor is where you get your deliverance. Pastor is where you get your finances. Pastor is where you get your prosperity. It's not all about that. If pastor is hooked up to God, then that's good. Then you're going to get taught. You're going to get educated in the Bible like you should. But still, he did not do this of himself. This had to come from the Lord. And I want you to get this. You know, so if you are being slack today, you need to reverse that curse of being slack and you need to get on the bandwagon. You need to go out and serve. You need to go out and bring some to the lap of God. Amen. But anyway, I'm going to finish up with in the book of Deuteronomy and it's going to let us see here that it is all about God. Everything that we are and everything that we do and everything that we, we are to be is about God. It has nothing to do with the church that you are affiliated with. It is about God. It is about the kingdom of God. Amen. So um, we're going to start in uh, uh, the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. We're going to start with the ninth verse. And we're going to read on down to the 13th verse. And then we're going to be right out of your way. But I want you to understand that. And I'm not talking about you that are focused, the you that is tuned in to God. I'm talking about the unconcerned, those that don't really know uh, who they are, what they are, and whose they are, and who called them who they to serve. This is, this is the you. Amen. But if, if you are on track and you know it's about God and everything you do is about God, then you focus totally on God. Because the Bible tells us to set our affections on things up above, not on things of the earth. So we got to put our mind set and our doing on God that he might get the glory for everything that we do. Deuteronomy 28 9 begins like this. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people listen unto himself. So he's not making you to be holy for the church folks. He's not making you to be holy for the Bible. He's not making you be holy for you. He's making you to be holy for himself that he might be able to see deeply inside you and ordain you and anoint you to carry out a task that only you can do for him. There are many members in the body, but each member has its function. Always remember this. Amen. So he said, if thou keep the commandments of the Lord, thy God, and walk in his way, you will be established as his people unto himself. And all peoples of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Now, the enemy is a bold something. Now, he has no respect for the Jesus that you have in you. He has no respect for the anointing for the Holy Ghost that you have in you. People will say anything to you. People will do anything to you without respect of who in you. If you look in the news lately, it's not just uh, street killings. People are going into churches and just taking over churches. And I wonder why this is. Are we where we need to be spiritually that the Lord can protect everything that he's given us to carry out? Our churches, our homes, our kids. We're losing them each and every day. As I stated, people are going into our churches and shooting up the congregation. Because of that evil spirit, why can't we stand up and allow the, the spirit of God to stand up for us and, 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 and just cover us 
because the Bible says there's only one power, and that power is of God. But we are making it look like that there are more than one power. Yes, I realize the enemy does things, but he don't have no more power than we give him. We are his representation. When we're not tuned into God and we are doing what he directs us to do, meaning the enemy, then we're going to give him power. We're going to give him strength simply because we have yielded our member unto him. Come on here. And the Bible tells us whoever we yield our members to is our father. Come on here. So who are you serving today? Who are you working for? What kingdom are you trying to build? Come on here. Amen. So he said, all the people of the earth shall see that you have been called out by the Lord, and they shall be afraid. Verse 11 says, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, not begging, not suffering. He said he will make you plenteous in good. And see, where we fail to, to understand, we can be saving, we can do all we know to do, but it might be something that else that, you, that you're not knowing. You know, like the, the Bible tells this particular story where the brother was saying, yeah, I did everything from birth. I did all of this. But then he said, thou lackest one thing. What are you lacking today that will allow God to wake up in your life and to be everything that you need? Because the word says again, that he shall make thee plenteous in good in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground in the land which, which the Lord swear unto thy father to give thee. Verse 12 said, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures. So God's going to give you access to everything that can keep you afloat. The anointing prosperity, good help, food on your table, roof over your head. And everybody will see, even though there might be a drought in the land, you're going to be in the land of plenty. Come on here, somebody. Mm. So, he will open up the heavens to give the rain into the land in this season and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Verse 13 says, And the Lord shall make thee head and not the tail. How many is putting us under their feet today? How many is the head and making us the tail? When it's supposed to be the other way. We have to reverse the spirit of error. The world and they that are in it is at hand. We have to reverse the spirit of error. We shall be above and not beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. See, he said, observe and to do. When we observe and do, we can reverse the spirit of error. We can bring them out of darkness and show them the marvelous light when we come away from the spirit of error. Amen. We thank God for his red word this morning and we are hoping soon that Barbara will come back and get on track and finish up her resistance sin series part four and then we'll move on from that. But I am so thankful that you allowed me to grace you this morning with uh, his word and uh it's just, it's just a blessing just to wake up with him on my mind and, and to, you know, just uh, begin my day with work. And, and wow, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of sort of been um, a tough time. This, this daylight saving time has come and it seems like my nights haven't been what they're supposed to be. Sleep hasn't been necessarily there because my body hasn't quite adjusted to this new time. And it has really been a struggle to sleep. But who knows, maybe the good Lord is trying to tell me something. But nevertheless, I got an ear open to him if he decided to cry. But this has been another Word of Truth Outreach podcast. And I'm your host today, Kent. And hopefully, as I stated, Barbara will be back on track with her Resistance in Series Part 4. 
I hope each and every one of you have a blessed day, and I bid you Godspeed. Take care, be safe, and reverse the curse of error in Jesus' name. And we out. Be blessed.